Welcome back to War Is Us. So today we're going to be showing you how to deploy your Nurgle army. Now I'll be showing you the lists, but just a little um, bit of information. One, we're not going to be doing big battles on these sort of reports. They're going to be a little bit smaller. So these are only a thousand point forces. I have designed the Nurgle list and a very helpful friend of mine, Tom, who hopefully will be joining us on the channel soon. He's in love with Bloom's Fire and we're going to be talking about Bloom's Fire as well. Um, in the near future, he designed this Nighthaunt list. He played them for a little bit. So let's drag up those lists and then just go through that list with you quickly. So Nighthaunt, we've got a Tomb Banshee, the Guardian of Souls, Spirit Torment. The general is the Knight of Shrouds with the Ruler of the Spirit Host and the Doppelganger Cloak. He is then accompanied by 20 Chain Rasps, 10 Grimgoss Keepers, a unit of Morn... My Morn Banshees and Glaive Wraith Stalkers. Nurgle is a great unclean one with the Tomb of the Thousand Poxes. Uh, and then we've obviously got five uh, Blight Lords, 20 Plague Bearers, and then the Harbinger of Decay and the Lord of Plagues. So that's our lists. Now let's go into the deployment. Okay, and welcome back. So this is going to show you how to deploy your army. So we're going to get into how we've deployed our Nighthaunt army that we're going to be facing. But first of all, what we're going to do is just show you the quick uh, order of what we're going to drop things in. So here, obviously, you've got your Feculent Norma. Now, this is normally done before deployment, So, but we'll show that first. Then our first unit that you're always going to want to deploy will be your Plague Bearers. We'll explain why. Then your Lord of Plagues, your Putrid Blight Kings, Harbinger K, and then obviously, finally, the Peace de la Resistance, the Great Unclean One. So what we have done today is, from the list that you saw beforehand, we have deployed in this manner on purpose. So as you can see, we have the Knight of Shrouds there by some Banshees. Um, and then we've got Tomb Banshee on the left hand side there out in the open on purpose. Then we've got a hidden little unit over here. And then we have, again, just a small line of infantry with some big blob of chain rasps in the far corner. So this has been done on purpose to simulate how an opponent might try to get you to buy into the bait. Now, when we say buy into the bait, what they may do is put a big blob or very hard key things to one side just to dominate one side of the board. Now, as we said at the beginning, we're playing shifting objectives. So that's what we've done because this is what you will generally see. If someone has one giant horde, they're gonna to aim to either take a corner or the center board. Now, center board fights can bog down a lot. So you will generally see hordes on the side, so they can then come into the centre. It's easier to go, come into the centre than it is to go out wide. So we've also left a bit of bait here. So we know the fact that the Knight of Shrouds on his horse will buff those Banshees, and that Tomb Banshee is a hero that, again, will just assist with his abilities. Sorry, bringing that up a little bit more. Do apologise. Um, so what we'll do is we'll drop... Our scenery piece. Now we've pre measured this out so it is more than three inches away from that piece of scenery. I apologize. This is a army that we are working on currently here. Um, there we go. Right. So we've got that down. So this is where you're going to want to place it quite close to your deployment if you can. Um, and then just up and make sure you're just the the minimum that we request is just three away from each scenery piece. And depending on the objective, sometimes it's an inch, sometimes it's three inch, um, to my understanding of the new rules. So I'm just going to place him there. Now, the reason we're then dropping our plague bearers next is because we're not looking to play a reaction drop game. Okay, so we all know if you're a seasoned Age of Sigmar player, your opponent drops, you drop, your opponent drops, and then you drop. So we're gonna just show you what you should do. Ignore the fact that your opponent may be dropping in a certain style to an extent. 
because they will want you to play a reaction game to an extent so they can position you in a way that's going to then play into their game plan. Make them play your game plan every time, even if that means by every instant in your body not wanting to deploy the way that you normally do every game, you still do it. You want to play your game when it comes to Warhammer. So what we always say to do is pick a side. So you can pick, obviously, the left side, sorry, the right side, the center, or the left-hand side. In this environment, looking at how our opponent would have deployed, we're going to take up the center field, okay? And we're going to look to bog that down. Now, what we will do is not deploy your standard way. We're going to create what I like to call the tail whip, okay? So what I generally do is place five models an inch apart, flat, okay, like this, like this, and then I start to curve. Now, the reason I start to curve will become very apparent very quickly, and that's where I'll stop. So four inches in, or models down, I'll stop. And then I'll do the same on the other side. One, two, three, four. Now, that just looks like a very weird snake shape. But the reason we've done it like that is because we could place the Hajar and Decay there. We can place him there, depending on what side we want to take the um, future Blood Kings with. So do we want them to go on the right side or on the left side? In this game, we're going to want to go to the left side, and we're going to show you why. Okay. And again, what we'll then just do is we'll create, with two models, just a little, what I call, hook line at the end, like that. Okay. Like you're going fishing. It's the little line that's dangling in the water. Now, our next drop is the Lord of Plagues. Now we've decided we're going to take the left hand side. He perks the Putrid Blight Kings here. So what we're going to do, we're going to play a clever little game by placing that just here. Okay, and we're keeping it very compact. And the reason we're keeping it so compact and not spread out is because the Great Unclean One's ability is huge. And that's because we've equipped him with the bell. We'd also recommend if you're going to build him, either magnetize him like so, or build him with the bell because the bell is amazing. So future Blight Kings. We're going to take the left-hand side, as we said. We're just going to now line these out in a straight line. Okay. Again, very tight knit to what we've got. Now we can drop him into our lovely little gap. Okay. And then finally, what we want to do is take this bad boy and we're just going to place him to one side here. Okay. And we're just going to put him round here. We're going to want to measure it out because you want it to be seven inches away because the bell will give you plus movement as long as you're within seven inches. So it's, yep, every unit is gonna get hit from that deployment. So when we look at our deployment now from afar, okay, looks very, very simple, very basic. You've got what you'd call a strange snake tail, but what you've got from that is you've got one, two heroes here. Again, look out, sirs. You've got a unit that's gonna benefit from the plus three movement. And if we're lucky on the roll and we get our one, then that's going to be plus two. So that's plus five movement, and that means they're going to be moving nine inches. Okay. Now, if you're playing a fast army, what we would always say, with Nurgle especially, take the first turn. Okay. So super fast armies, Ideneth, Slanesh, Zinch, because they can do their big teleports and drop in front of you that's what you should do. Now, if, we have, if we're playing 2,000 points, and as we said earlier in the video, this is only 1,000 points, um, what we would then do, just to capitalise on what we've got, we would have 
more plague bearers. We would really fill out on the plague bearers and the uh, putrid blight kings there. So we would then, again, just extend another unit here, doing the same formation. Okay, and then what we would also then do is have more pockets of our putrid blight kings. They would be here. That's why we've left this gap here, because you can then, if it's a 2,000 point battle, you can fit your units here, even if it's a unit of five there and a unit of five just behind on this side. OK, but what it does, it creates pockets for the units to be able to come out and attack. OK, so we're going to get into now turn one, but that will be in the next video of what you should be doing. And we'll be doing, um, obviously, the battle reports in sections. Um, just to make it a bit easier to divulge and the videos aren't too long. Um, as we were aware that the last video was extremely long, we got some really good feedback on that. So thank you for everyone that contacted us um, and obviously gave that feedback. But if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumb up, give us a subscribe, hit that bell notification for more uh, great videos, hopefully, that you're going to enjoy. And we'll see you soon.